Here's the problem right here. You can see it's clutch pedals all the way down. Pull that back up. This is the problem. This is the clutch master cylinder push rod. This pushes in and drives a slave cylinder inside the bell housing. And you can see that it goes on to this right here. And you can see how part of it is worn away. It's gone. And this falls off of this after about know, five or ten clutch actuations. Your, your foot pushes on the pedal and it pushes that rod down when it's connected. And that's what broke on me. The idea is to cut this loop off here and get rid of this Mickey Mouse plastic bushing that's in there. And there'll be a really strong, what they call a hem joint that goes on there. It looks like a little steering linkage ball ball joint that goes on there. And it's supposed to make it a forever fix. Every Ford I've had, truck, has had problems with this piece wearing out. And I had always kept some in stock and I would just replace them when needed. But this one wore out and wore this pin down without me knowing and it broke at last minute when I was in traffic. So I hauled it home. I'm going to try to demonstrate, replicate this problem by pushing on the clutch. You can see I have it attached. Um, should take less than 10 times. I can already see it walking off of there. And there it is. I even lost the little plastic piece that's supposed to go in there. And that is actually now damaged. Here is that swing arm that's off the clutch pedal that's used to actuate the uh, rod that goes back and forth inside and out of the uh, clutch master cylinder. I put a couple index marks on here when it was installed so I can match it back up to original if I need to. Um, I need to grind this off here and drive out this pin and you can see how that's worn away quite badly. The part of the rod that fit over this was also worn away but not as severe. And it's a good thing that this is adjustable because the uh, rod, what did I do with it? Hang on. The rod is a little bit longer when you put this heim joint on. And getting this out of the master cylinder, if you don't know this trick, you will ruin your master cylinder getting this out. And the way to do that is to take a ballpoint pen and cut it in half. Of course, you remove the ink and the tip and all that. Cut it in half and cut a slit down one side of it. So you can take this and fit it over. When you push that in, it disengages the clips, and this whole thing just pulls right out. There's the heim joint. I cut off the old loop that was on the rod, and I cut it off as long as I could. I can always cut it shorter if I need to. I cut it off as long as I could, and I put this on. It's got a set screw, and I Loctited it. And this is ready to go back in. What's well, a little bit longer 
than what it should be. And rather than cut this too short by mistake, this guy here, it has a little bit of adjustment in it when it's bolted up. This is splined. Let's see if I can find you here. There it is. This is splined. You can kind of see it there when it's on the clutch pedal. There's a rod underneath there. If you're doing this job, you'll, you'll see it. It'll all make sense. And that's also why I put these index marks on here so I can put this uh, swing arm back on in the original position if I have to, if for some reason this does not work. Once I get this, zoom you back out here, once I get this rod, this pin taken out, I got this guy here goes in its place. And it's a tight fit. You don't want to drill this out. Grind off the end and you drive that pin out. The hammer and a punch. I put a stainless steel washer between the lock washer and the ball of the hem joint. So I didn't like the lock washer compressing on the ball of the joint. I don't think it would cause a problem, but I did it just for good measures. A little short on threads when I do that, but that's okay. I got Loctite on there and that lock washer. There's the other side. And I think this is going to work. Here you have the final installation. The push rod is back inserted into the clutch master cylinder. The heim joint is installed on the end of the rod. Loctited the set screw. The set screw is also pointed down so I can tighten it or loosen it if I needed to for some reason. should not come loose. The heim joint is bolted to the swing arm and it's also Loctited. You can also see, I have the cover off of the neutral safety switch. It is on there. I don't have the wire harness plugged into it yet, but I will. And you can clearly see that when the clutch pedal is activated, the heim joint does not bottom out at the back side of the neutral safety switch. Some people have indicated that. And yes, that is true, but you need to adjust, you need to adjust his arm a little bit, the swing arm. And I've adjusted the swing arm a back probably one or two splines because it is splined and this works just like it should. I haven't driven it but I have started it and seen where the clutch engages and disengages and it feels pretty much the same. I'm satisfied with this fix. It will never be a problem again. That concludes this video. And hopefully it helps you out. Not real good at making how-to videos or or that kind of thing, but uh, I've supplied enough information here where it should be able to help all you Bronco owners, F-150 owners, F-250, 350, 450, and 550 owners that are experiencing or have experienced the same problem. This is how Ford should have done it.